painting is a meditative ritual, and this is something that I hate to sound, you know, cliche. Since I was born, I was, I was creating things. I was writing stories. I was, I was drawing. I was painting. I was sculpting. You know, I was born this way, and I just, and I just do it because I don't know, and I want a reason behind it so that I can better use that part of me to progress. That being said, since I was little, I used it as therapy. I grew up in a poor family. When I was little, I remember feeling very spiritually, mentally trapped and a little railroaded. My natural inclination as a kid was to hide all that away, push, pack it down inside so no one could see what I was feeling. And this is only me looking back on my childhood from what I remember. I used art as my therapist. Asserting and verbalizing my needs and my wants, you're supposed to do that? What? I did not consider it emotionally safe to do so. There needed to be some kind of release somehow because I was just packing it all in. And that's why I started creating things. As I got older and I got into college, I naturally preferred painting. It's now the, the main thing of what I do and that I connect most with. Another way painting is a ritual, meditative ritual, is it allows you to connect to your heart. Heart meditations is kind of a new concept for me. Only in the last couple of weeks, really, I've started to do this. And it's only because I didn't know how. I didn't, I've heard of it before and I didn't really understand how to do it. I started to channel um, love, healing, feelings, channeling from my heart to a specific person just to get an idea of, of how it's supposed to feel, how I'm supposed to do it. Also, when I think of connecting with your heart, it's also getting to know yourself also connecting with source, universe, God, whatever. I came to find that painting is a meditative process to get to the feelings that I want to feel in my life. A lot of people use prayer, other forms of meditation like yoga or some type of like dance or body movement or chanting, they use their voice. I use painting, you can zone out. You can use your hands, you, it's very tactile, it's very visual. And no matter what you make, whatever comes out of you is an expression of you, of your point of view of life. Of It's like a little snapshot of your life at that time. A third way that it's a meditative ritual is that it's very cathartic. It's a cathartic release of, of energy. It's a very powerful release, just like running is. Like, it's a thing now. Go with a small group of friends to that painting and wine type type deal where you, you drink some wine, you paint, you know, and you have a good time. People may not think of this as like a spiritual ritual, but it's really, it's like a social ritual where you are connecting with source, you're connecting with friends and loved ones, you're connecting with yourself. And it's also really interesting to me what type of painting, what type of like brush strokes or colors that you choose to use at that time if you're like stressed out versus painting the same thing if you're not stressed out, if you're like totally chill. And there is a difference and it's all subconscious and you probably don't even recognize it or realize it. In my mid twenties, I had like a quarter life crisis. There were several events that happened kind of all at once that that made me kind of have this breakdown. I needed to find myself because I didn't know who I was. When you like lose a habit, you have to replace it with something else. Quitting sugar. I've recently just kind of quitted sugar pretty much. At least like dramatically decreased the amount of sugar that I eat. And I've replaced it with a high fat eating, a higher fat, higher veggie um, diet. I no longer wake up with headaches. I constantly wake up wake up with headaches. No, sleeping five or six hours now, I don't wake up with a headache. My, my body loves this type of diet. I'm saying, I'm telling you. So painting is a ritual, yeah. And that's why I created um, a style of painting that I do called affirmation portrait. And that's, and it's not a portrait like the portrait of a person. It is abstract, it's non-representational, it's non-objective. It, 
it's also expressionist. If you think of a nebulous, like space, the final frontier, it is the expression of a feeling. I call it a portrait because it's like you're painting a portrait of a feeling. The main reason why it works powerfully as a ritual is because there's it forces you to have no judgment on what it looks like and just let it be what it is. I couldn't find anything like this out there, so I created it. And if you would like to commission um, an affirmation portrait from me or learn a bit, a little bit more about it, um, that's on my website. I would love, love, love to do a commissioned affirmation portrait for you. It's like my favorite part. Yes, I want to teach you how to make them yourselves, but I love making them for other people. So that's all for now, and I'll see you next week. Bye.